So, welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, today we talk about the best distribution. No, uh, it's open source Laura. And what is it? So, as you might have heard, who, who has heard of Slowra? Yeah, a few hands. Who has not heard of Slowra? <laughs> uh, everyone here, but we have people in the stream, maybe. So, uh, it's a new distribution based on open source Tumbleweed, uh, but it's rolling slower. We will see details about how exactly that works, and um, most of uh, what it does is scripted, so it don't have to do much manual work and can enjoy the conference here. That's really nice. And another nice thing we have is uh, that we have maintenance mode. It's like Leap. So you get updates, but you can also still install the old versions. That's not like in Tumbleweed. When you have a new version in Tumbleweed, then the old version is gone from the repo. Um, and uh, it started when we discussed uh, about Leap 16 and there was a lot of uncertainty if there will be a SLE 16 back then, so we didn't know uh, can we even do an open source Leap 16 if there's no SLE 16, that's really hard. Uh, but what we can do is, uh, based on Tumbleweed, but be a bit slower and still release security updates. So that's what I started and tried it out and it worked amazingly well. And who exactly is working out? Uh, one is me, and some contributions came from one guy from our SUSE security team uh, who packaged the kernel long term that is maintained by upstream kernel contributors as an LTS kernel. Currently it's on 6.6, and it's getting regular maintenance updates with both uh, security fixes and feature fixes. And there's already a small community, mostly on Reddit, sometimes also in other places like the factory mailing list. And they uh, already start to use uh, the distribution and provide testing and bug reports. So why, why would we do yet another distribution? It's pretty simple. There's a leap on the one hand where 15.0 uh, came out six years ago, and some of the components in leap are still six years old, never got updated. And uh, that makes packaging for leap really hard because sometimes you need newer dependencies and uh, they're just not in leap, and it's sometimes hard to get them into leap because it's part of SLEE and SLEE tries to be stable. So um, some part. Some software is hard to package for Leap. And on the other hand, we have Tumbleweed. It's really easy to get packages into Tumbleweed. It's rolling really fast. You have the latest things. If you break something, you can have a fix two days later. And there, that's really nice. Um, but really, uh, sometimes there are breakages. Recently, we had uh, the Mesa issue where it uh, showed broken graphics on AMD graphics uh, GPUs. And uh, then, a short time later, we had broken Wi-Fi on Intel uh, Wi-Fi adapters. So that can happen. And well, it does happen because there's OpenGA test coverage. And OpenGA test coverage, as you might know, uses a lot of KVM virtual machines and does this virtual user thing to try out various things. But KVM, KVM cannot emulate an AMD and GPU, and it cannot emulate an Intel Wi-Fi adapter. So these things cannot be tested in there. Uh, but I felt a ticket to uh, add some hardware tests. It's uh, modular, so you can plug in some HDMI capture and USB uh, emulator in OpenQA, and then you could test more of these in OpenQA for Tumbleweed. And that could also make Tumbleweed more stable. That would be a great enhancement for all of us. And how exactly do we do slower? So on one hand, there's a wiki page that has all the relevant links, including the one on top. But that one on top is the main uh, thing I work on. That's the tools uh, where all the rules are encoded. Uh, currently, it's uh, bash and Perl. And because Perl is nice with pattern matching, so we can uh, check the change log and uh, look for magic keywords. You could use AI or you could call your Perl script AI because it's doing 
interesting stuff, but at least it's uh, fully deterministic and predictable, and that's what I like about having it scripted. If you want to have a look, do we have it somewhere? I opened it up somewhere. Yeah, that's a part of uh, the main uh, select updates uh, script, uh, where it checks um, when it should update a package, and one easy uh, match is uh, when there's a CVE mentioned in there, then the delay gets reset to zero, basically. So it is an immediate update. But on the other hand, if there's no CVE, but only a normal bug mentioned, then it gets uh, speed up a bit uh, by 30% faster. And then there's other factors that are considered there. And some packages we just uh, don't update, like a major KDE version update. Uh, we leave that for the version bump later. And the version bumps we see maybe exactly here. Uh, not here, that's a daily update. Uh, the top graph here shows Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed got an update here. And a few minutes later, my cron job came around and uh, did this bump in the blue graph. That's a build project. So there's... Uh, moved a few extra packages into the build project at that point. And then they get built in the build project in the Tumbleweed context. So when we have older libraries and Tumbleweed, uh, we cannot reuse, uh, when we have older libraries and Slora, we cannot reuse the Tumbleweed binaries because the Tumbleweed binaries might require the newer library. So we rebuild everything uh, at that point, And that takes a bit, like two hours in this case. And then it gets uh, pushed out into slow roll update repos. That's this bump here. And at that point, it becomes available to users. But uh, we don't just push out our own slow roll uh, binaries. And because then, at the next version bump, uh, we would have to throw away all of these binaries, and Superdup would say, oh, uh, we need to update a lot of stuff. So there's a step where I compare uh, the binaries that I built in the slow roll build project to the official Tumbleweed binaries. And if build compare says, yeah, it's the same binaries, then I just reuse the Tumbleweed binaries. And the Tumbleweed binaries, that's the green amount here. So that's really three quarter, maybe, or in numbers. We have tumbleweed packages and slow 800, and slow specific packages only 200. So yeah, it's really a large packet, a large proportion is just tumbleweed binaries that we can reuse because they are fully the same. And if you uh, that differ, yeah, we have to uh, have our own binaries there. Yeah? And that's where my other pet project, Reproducible Builds, comes in nicely because uh, there's really few packages that always vary. And uh, these would show up in the yellow parts and would have to be discarded at the next version bump. And how does a version bump look like? We had one at the start of this month, early June. Um, so a tumbleweed was moving, and it was getting away uh, a lot from slower. And at some point, it's so far away that it's really hard to um, keep updating. So the rate of updates goes slightly down over time, because we don't want to take these major updates, but then we also don't get minor updates on these packages that already had a major update. And we don't want to build, uh, do backports, because backports are manual and a lot of work. We only do that for important security updates uh, that, uh, where we don't want to take the major version bump of a package. Yeah, and for the version bump, uh, the decision currently is to do it monthly because it's a nice cadence, it's nicely predictable. So the next one will be around the 9th of June, uh, July, and then 9th of August and 9th of September. That's the plan. Uh, and I take a Tumbleweed snapshot, but I took it here a bit earlier, a few days um, before. Uh, so it's uh, nice that a Tumbleweed can also uh, still get fixes uh, in the time after I take the snapshot. And then I can prepare some things, like I can build the DVD uh, from the new Tumbleweed snapshot that installs the role. And when that's all prepared and done, then I run another make target that says, okay, now uh, this 
a tumbleweed snapshot from six days ago. Uh, now it goes out on the servers uh, to all the users. And that's uh, this bump here. And there you see there's already a few updates uh, that also come along that fixed issues that were discovered in Tumbleweed and already fixed uh, by that point in time. So then the slower users never saw these issues. That's a nice thing there of having this extra delay of a few days before uh, between taking the snapshot and uh, publishing the snapshot with a few updates on top. Yeah, and then it starts rolling again. Sometimes uh, there's phases where Tumbleweed uh, stops rolling. Uh, I think here was a weekend and there was some issues, or here there was some system D, up arm or whatever problem. Uh, so th sometimes there's these phases uh, where it stops rolling. And uh, in that case, uh, I still had a daily cron job where I pulled updates, but I realized maybe it's not so good because uh, if Tumbleweed doesn't get updates, then I don't get bug fixes anyway for issues that are there, so I don't need to pull updates. And that's why here, when there were no updates, I also did not release updates for slow roll. So it moves really at the same cadence as Tumbleweed. There. And then when there was a big update, I got a slightly bigger update here, but not, not as big as Tumbleweed. So yeah, if, it's really nice to see that in the mooning graphs. So um, there's some open issues that still uh, need some solution. One we had when Tumbleweed moved to KDE 6. There was some package about whatever KDE settings center, and it got a new name because the old one was KDE settings 5, and the new one was KDE settings 6. So it was basically a rename, and for renames, we add these uh, obsolete uh, values and spec files. And uh, currently, my scripts say, yeah, new, new packages, uh, that should be safe because it's just a new package. It can live on the site, but uh, when there's this obsolete, it means that uh, Zipper sees, ah, yeah, the old one, we shouldn't keep that. So it decided to uninstall the KDE 5 version of uh, that software. And the KDE 6 version didn't work on KDE 5. So users said, yeah, it's broken now. And then I reverted it because it's easy uh, when it's just an update repo. You just uh, drop the KDE 6 version, and I have a um, blacklist where I can add packages that should not be updated automatically. So they only get updated at version bumps or if I do it manually. And the other uh, thing I discovered is. Um, that when I look at this change log, uh, if there's a CVE mentioned, sometimes uh, there's new mentions of CVE uh, when uh, there was not actually a fix added. Uh, there's even two reasons for that. One reason is um, upstream fixed it, uh, upstream released a new version, we got the new version in Tumbleweed, uh, I got this version in uh, Slora already, uh, but they didn't add a CVE reference uh, to the change log. And then later, uh, when uh, they come around to it, then they add the CVE to the change log. Um, but the fix was already in the package that we have in slow roll. So, uh, but then there is this Tumbleweed update where it says, oh, there's no this new line that says there was a CVE fixed, uh, when actually we did already have the CVE fix. So yeah, it's sort of bogus, and the other case is when the change log said uh, remove CVE something patch, uh, yeah, that doesn't fix the CVE either, uh, but uh, it matches the regular expression, so yeah, we need to be a bit smarter. It shouldn't be too hard in the second case at least. Yeah, it's not perfect, but yeah, it doesn't hurt. Uh, then it's just uh, one extra update uh, that pops up. So it doesn't even break things. The obsolete one does break things occasionally. Um, yeah, we had more problems to solve. For example, uh, in the build service, we have this nice feature called Download on Demand, or DOD. And we use that to import uh, other distributions, like Fedora. And for these, when we want to build, we pull binary RPMs from an external HTTP server, and then uh, we can build against things, but it has a disadvantage that we don't even have the sources. We just have the binary we used to build. 
and uh, for building DVDs, we use a tool called Product Builder, which is an old fork of a Kiwi version that was still written in Perl. And that was really confusing when you first looked at it, because I was seeing these Kiwi messages and it didn't match up with anything I saw in current Kiwi versions. Um, but this old um, uh, product builder version um, wasn't able to use packages from on, on demand. So as a solution there, uh, I did an OC release, which takes um, sources and binaries from Tumbleweed and pulls them into a project. In this case, it's a slow based project. And then uh, I have the binaries in OBS, really, and not just via download on demand, and then I can use them for DVDs. So that problem is solved. I can have really nice local DVDs with a nice local logo, and it just works. Uh, net install is still a bit more tricky because yeah, reasons. There's different components that have IDs, and they need to match on the FTP server. But I take a snapshot of the Tumbleweed FTP tree and use it for slow roll. So I need to override the ID in the net eyes, and then it still works. So it's sort of so solved. Uh, but uh, then the installer still has a Tumbleweed logo in there. But yeah, who cares? At least it installs slow roll nicely. That's the main thing. And there's another thing uh, called uh, FreezeLink. I use that because we have Pac-Man. And Pac-Man does this thing where they uh, link a few packages over from our build service into their project uh, in the Pac-Man build service. And they rebuild it in their context with their rules. Um, but to be able to link, uh, there need to be sources on our side. And uh, as you might have uh, heard a few minutes earlier, uh, Download On Demand only pulls in binaries, not sources. And for that, OBS has this nice feature called a project link. Uh, so in the base project, I just say, I have this project link um, pointing to Tumbleweed. But of course, uh, Tumbleweed uh, keeps rolling and rolling, and I don't want the latest versions. So I call an API called freeze link. That's poorly documented, but it works, and then it um, still has the same project link, but it has a reference to uh, very specific versions in uh, Tumbleweed that don't update uh, until you call freeze link again, except there's a bug that uh, times out after 10 minutes, and uh, for such a large project, updating takes 15 minutes, and then there's a nice workaround that I implemented that's uh, delete and do a new freeze link, and then it works. Um, yeah, but it's still imperfect, because um, when there's new packages added to Tumbleweed, then these sources will still pop up in uh, that project as a project link, because uh, these are not mentioned in the freeze link, and uh, maybe, maybe there could be a fix on the OBS side to ignore them uh, if they are not mentioned. Yeah, and uh, deleted packages could also be a problem, but uh, most of the time we don't drop uh, important packages, so so far deleted packages were not a problem here. Yeah, and another issue were packages that depend on each other, so when we update or whatever, uh, Telegram Desktop, there's another component called Telegram Web, and those need to match in certain versions, or uh, we have another called OpenSSL3 and OpenSSL, and uh, they want to have certain versions. And uh, in the beginning, that was also tricky, uh, even though I don't always uh, correctly uh, resolve these. So uh, resolving that still needs uh, some manual effort. So in the good case, it just shows up as unresolvable in the build project. And then I can see, OK, there's some fix that we would want to have, but it's not released yet because it couldn't be built. And then I have to look manually and pull in the dependencies and resolve it. Yeah, and sometimes it's just unimportant packages, and then uh, they stay waiting for the next version bump, and then we get updated anyway. And we can have, ah, that was already the second uh, problem fetch. Um, there's still some things we need to do more. For example, uh, OpenKA tests would be nice. 
so we know uh, that uh, the updates we release work or the DVD image uh, we build uh, works. So there was some work done for some uh, VM image, uh, but it bit rotted a bit away. So currently we don't have working OpenQA tests. On the to-do list is also something about install tests. There's a nice tool in libsolve package that lets you check, uh, can I even install this one package? And then it tells you, nah, it needs this other version of something, and um, that should be easy to run. Yeah, but needs some scripting as well. And the second thing is really to do better tracking of CVEs and bugs. For example, if a package contains a CVE fix and it ends up in the build project as unresolvable, then yeah, I see it in, as unresolvable, but it's in a longer list of 10, 20, 30 packages maybe, so it doesn't stand out as yeah, maybe we should prioritize this one to get it released and uh, other major bugs or even minor bugs uh, we would also want to prioritize, but uh, there's no proper tracking uh, besides the initial uh, looking at change logs and pulling it into the uh, build project thing. And uh, thirdly, uh, what we could improve is that uh, we could look at pending updates. So when something uh, is near in Tumbleweed and we are about to take it into slow roll, but there's a submit request for this thing. Maybe we want to wait for the submit request to length, so we only get one update in slow roll and not uh, two of them, where the first might even be uh, broken with a bug. We don't know. So um, that's also still to do. Yeah, and on the plus side, we had some nice achievements. We have pretty smooth monthly version bumps where most of the tasks are already scripted. So I just uh, call uh, certain make targets at certain points in time. So two or three of them. And uh, we managed to avoid uh, some of the tumbleweed problems, for example, the Mesa AMD problem. We didn't get because it was a major version update of Mesa and we only take major version updates every month. Yeah, in another case, like the Wi-Fi problem, we did get because yeah, it was in a firmware package and they thought, yeah, getting firmware updates um, might be good and safe because someone tests these things, but yeah, apparently it's not, not extremely well tested. And um, there was also the author of Get Gecko Linux, uh, someone going by the name of SB, uh, whoever that might be, and he said, yeah, I uh, want to use slow roll instead of tumbleweed because maybe it's more stable or not, not rolling that fast. So he has an easier time building his images and following uh, updates. So should be nice to see that one. And with that, we are at the end of the slides and open for questions. Uh, maybe we get a microphone in the back again. Yeah. Uh, thank you. My question would be, are there any plans to make a new variation for micro OS that will be based on the slow roll? Because I could see a lot of benefits for the systems that has to be automatically updated overnight, and with slow roll it could be potentially a little bit more stable. Yes. Um, actually, uh, when you look at the OpenSUSE release package uh, that we have in slow roll, yeah, you would see that there's not only a tumbleweed slow roll flavor, but also a micro S slow roll flavor in there. But I don't actively test that one. Uh, so uh, it might work. Uh, someone at SUSE tried it out, um, one of the trainees, and said yeah, it's working. So it could just work. Replace the repos in, in your micro S and roll slower, and then at the next version bump, you will get a larger number of updates like uh, this. 2000 package gap, something. Um, but it can work. So, the um, question is if we should make that one an explicit flavor as well and communicate more uh, publicly about that variant as well. Uh, Richard might be 
opposed to that because he said micro S should be so stable, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but if it works and we don't have extra work for it because we already do the work for tumbleweeds lower flavor, uh, then why not? Do we have Thank more you. questions? Hmm? Thank you. Okay, if there's no more questions, um, thank you. <laughs>